hello everyone in this video we are going to discuss various terms of pregnancy induced hypertension or even you can say hypertensive disorders of pregnancy so we are going to discuss various terms and make it crystal clear that which term used for what so the PIH that is pregnancy induced hypertension eclampsia preeclampsia that can be severe and mild or moderate hypertensive disorder of pregnancy gestational hypertension supraimposed hypertension or supraimposed preeclampsia on chronic hypertension and chronic hypertension of the pregnancy so the larger umbrella the largest umbrella is now called what hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy and not the pih pih we was the term we are going to we were using the pregnancy induced hypertension we were using as an umbrella term but now we are not using we are using the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy as an umbrella of the terms each and everything that is related to hypertension in the pregnancy is called hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy and that includes <coughs> gestational hypertension preeclampsia eclampsia preeclampsia supra imposed on chronic hypertension and chronic hypertension of the pregnancy now let's discuss what is pih pih literally means pregnancy induced hypertension and when we say this term we are uh, putting the pregnancy as a culprit of hypertension in the pregnancy no it's not like that nowadays there are studies which says that pregnancy is the, not the sole reason of preeclampsia eclampsia or hypertensive disorders but it but is the vascular response of mother towards the pregnancy actually makes the problem so nowadays it's not used as pregnancy induced hypertension it used as a as a hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy and pregnancy is now not considered as a only culprit for hypertensive disorders <clears throat> okay now still if you want to use this term you can use this term for like gtn gestational hypertension preeclampsia eclampsia and supraimposed preeclampsia on chronic hypertension because these are the things that develops after 20 weeks of the pregnancy and they were not present before pregnancy and once the pregnancy is done in within 12 weeks all these things like gtn preeclampsia eclampsia and supraimposed hyper supraimposed preeclampsia all these terms are going to subside up to 12 week of the delivery so now this term you can use as a pih but preferably it should not be used now let's say what is gtn that is gestational hypertension bp was the normal before the pregnancy and up to 20 weeks of the pregnancy but now it becomes more than 140 90 on the two occasion that is sustained bp increased and bp returns to normal within 12 if 12 weeks of the termination of the pregnancy or uh, delivery there is no significant proteinuria and when i say proteinuria i always say 300 milligram in 24 hour urine so when i say proteinuria it literally means 300 mg per 24 hour urine protein okay now <clears throat> it's not associated with uh, platelet should be more than one lakh liver enzymes should be normal there should be no maternal symptoms like headache vision loss epigastric pain seizure oliguria iugr there should be no kidney damage and nothing when i said this symptoms these symptoms literally means end organ effects of pih or end organ effects of the hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy which are the end organs when there is a severe severe preeclampsia or severe let's say hypertension in the pregnancy it is going to affect many things like kidney liver the central nervous system the baby developing so all these things actually makes these symptoms like headache vision loss epigastric pain seizures oliguria iugr all these things are end organ effects of the hdn okay now this was gestational hypertension 
in gestational hypertension you only have is what increased bp sustained hypertension there is no significant proteinuria there is no symptoms otherwise everything is normal that is called gestational hypertension now let's say preeclampsia that means again gestational hypertension with proteinuria okay gestational hypertension was what more than 140 90 bp was there on the two occasions associated with proteinuria that is more than 300 microgram sorry milligram per 24 urine protein okay now you get the idea what is preeclampsia is now preeclampsia can be divided into two parts that is mild and severe now the mild variety which says that the difference between mild and severe is right here in mild the bp is more than 140 90 but the severe preeclampsia the bp reaches more than 160 110 diastolic bp is 110 the, pro, uh, the proteins are always more than 300 mg in 24 hour urine in both of the um, varieties but it is more in the severe preeclampsia there are no symptoms no end organ symptoms in the mild preeclampsia but there are symptoms present in the severe preeclampsia so once either in mild eclampsia bp reaches up to 160 110 or any symptom develops automatically it converts into severe preeclampsia okay <clears throat> now eclampsia is what eclampsia is very easy there is a severe preeclampsia plus seizure any preeclampsia i am not going to tell you that this is a mild eclampsia mild preeclampsia or severe preeclampsia any preeclampsia with seizure or coma with cns involvement is termed as a eclampsia it's as simple as that now let's say chronic hypertension chronic hypertension is what it's just like a hypertension in a normal patient like bp is more than 140 90 before 20 hours of pregnancy and even after the pregnancy subsides even after the after the 12 week hypertension is going to be there this is called chronic hypertension now let's say supraimposed preeclampsia in chronic hypertension patient already have a hypertension hypertensive there okay now the pregnancy develops after 20 20 weeks there is a new onset of proteinuria new onset of proteinuria it's called supraimposed preeclampsia okay so this is chronic hypertension so i am uh, very clear now that that you must be knowing all the terms very very easily and very very clear cut okay thank you friends